Are you looking for your first internship or full-time job? I'm here to tell you the three steps you should absolutely take in order to get this first job. First off, I'd like to welcome you to the Seminist Network. If you find this video valuable, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the Seminist Network to stay current on all our awesome new videos. All right, number one, work on your resume. And by this, I don't mean just sitting down and making it look fancy, because honestly, no amount of fancy cardstock paper or fancy fonts are really gonna matter if the content in your resume is not valuable. So let's talk about content. The first way to make your resume stand out is to join organizations. This is the best way to get work experience. Find groups either at your university or in your community that can use the skills you've gained so far from the classes you've taken. Getting hands-on experience will give you valuable content for your resume. Therefore, this can set you apart from the hundreds of other applicants that are also submitting their resume for the same job. Your goal is for your resume to be the needle in the haystack and to show the recruiter that you are worth their time rather than them just glancing at your resume for 10 seconds and screaming, next. So as an added bonus, I totally recommend taking on a leadership role in one of these organizations you've joined to show the recruiters that you can motivate other people and that you're really a team player. I know you must have heard me say this in my other videos, but I'm big on leadership roles. Remember that your resume is something that you should start working on ASAP. It takes a while to tailor it and it should always be a work in progress. And by this, I mean that anytime you gain a new skill or you work on a new project, you should go ahead and start adding it to your resume right away. Of course, as you start developing those skills more or working on those projects more, you'll have things to add to the resume, but it's good to start jotting these ideas down so you don't forget on what you worked on early on. Okay, now let's talk about proofreading your resume. I recommend for a final proofread to be done by anyone other than you. Have at least two people read through your resume and critique everything from formatting to technical data to ensure that you are conveying the right message. Remember, if you need help writing your resume, we have a video right here on the Seminist Network channel that will help you write the perfect engineering resume. All right, number two, mock interviews. Think of interviewing like driving your car. Remember when you first started learning how to drive and you would get in the car, feel butterflies in your stomach, and you were thinking, I'm for sure gonna crash this vehicle? And now you get in your car and you drive away confidently without even thinking about what you're doing? Well, I have good news for you. Interviewing is the same way. The more you do it, the more natural you'll become at it. After mastering the skill, you will be able to confidently show up to your interview and land your first engineering job. The best way to grow this confidence is to have at least three people mock interview you. Try to do this with people both that work in the field and people that do not work in the field. This will give you different perspectives on your answers and will help you improve your interview in the technical aspect and the non-technical aspect. It could feel a little bit awkward at first, but you will be so glad you've practiced talking about your experiences, such as projects you've worked on, once it's time for the real interview. I must admit that my first mock interview after my first ever internship with General Electric was definitely rough. I remember I didn't know how to talk about all the cool projects I had worked on and that I was so proud of because of the simple fact that I just hadn't practiced talking about them yet. And when it comes to talking about technical data, it is crucial to organize your thoughts and to think about the storyline. That way when it's time to talk about your projects to someone, you don't just throw a bunch of data at them, but you actually give them a backstory. After a few mock interviews, I realized I was increasingly engaging my listener. Therefore, practice, practice, practice. All right, number three, and this is a big one. Attend engineering conferences. Did you know that there are conferences that happen every year where top recruiters from places like Apple, Toyota, and IBM go with the sole purpose of hiring early career professionals like you? Here's how I know this is a great opportunity. Throughout college, I interned for three different companies for a total of five internships, and two of these companies hired me at these conferences. The conferences consist of workshops, career fairs, networking events, and so much more. Here's a list of some of the conferences I recommend you attend. And please note, you don't have to be Hispanic to go to the CHEP conference. 
and you don't have to be a woman to go to the sweet conference honestly anyone who is interested in learning and needs a job is welcome to attend these events normally you have to travel to these conferences but due to our current environment you can actually attend from the comfort of your home this makes it so much easier for you to be able to attend these events considering you will no longer have to pay for a flight or for a hotel the amount of networking opportunities you'll have for these events are limitless Meeting people through these conferences is so much better than submitting your resume to a pool in which a recruiter can't even tell what your personality is like. Honestly, being able to engage with recruiters and professionals that work at the companies you want to work for is priceless. And guess what? People love to hire candidates that have either been recommended to them or someone that they've met in person, even if it's virtually. If you are financially unable to go to these conferences, then I have good news for you. Check out the websites of the conferences you're interested in attending because a lot of them have scholarship programs that will actually pay for your conference ticket. Let me know in the comments below what kind of engineering job it is that you're trying to get. And also if you have any other tips that will help other people who are looking for their first engineering job as well, drop them in there too. Quick reminder to please like this video if you found the content valuable and to subscribe to the Steminist Network for more new and exciting content. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.